Hey Bulls and Bears, thank you very much for joining in. My name is JJ. You're watching Bull Boom Bear Bust. Back with another dose of you know what economic reality. Real estate agents are hitting the panic button. The volume in real estate has fallen off of a cliff. And as far as real estate goes, with agents, if you don't have transactions, you don't have any money. Now we can also expand this out to other people involved in the business, the appraisers, uh, the underwriters, the loan officers, uh, the home inspectors, uh, expand outward to the home improvement stores. Uh, real estate just has such a broad impact on the overall economy. Even home flippers are hesitant now, uh, even though they can fix the home up and make it nicer and probably get more for it. But when prices are falling, uh, stagnant and falling, depending on your location, uh, even flippers are reluctant to buy and resell a home in this environment. Because you may buy a home, fix it up, and it may add to its value. But if the market has dropped during the few months when you had to buy the home and fix it up, then you're still going to break even or lose money as a flipper. So we're seeing that volume also dry up with the home flippers. And I want to go over some data, some charts, and information today. Now, at my job, I actually work in finance. JJ, why do you dress like that? Well, I work at home, so I don't have to wear a suit and tie. I don't have to even wear a nice collared shirt if I don't want to. Uh, I get to dress like this even at my job talking to clients. <laughs> and yes, I would be pretty devastated if my company ever called me back to the office because um, not wearing khakis or shirts and ties, uh, I really don't miss that at all. All right, but at my job working in finance, I've gotten calls from several different real estate agents. Now, I talk to people in all different lines of work, um, but over the people that I've spoken with, some of them are real estate agents and I hear about their financial situation and the transactions, of course, are drying up. We're going to look at the sales numbers here in just a minute. In some cases, they're looking for other work. They're doing a side hustle or two side hustles or two part time jobs or getting out of the industry altogether and uh, finding a whole new line of work. And we're likely going to see in the next couple of years a lot of expired uh, real estate licenses. Just like we saw at the end of the housing bubble from 2008, 2009, 10, 11, 12, the number of realtors plummeted. Now, as a real estate agent, real estate professional, or, or in any line of work, you can prepare yourself for something like this by having a backup plan, a backup occupation, or a plan B. And we'll talk about that. But first, let's look at these sales numbers. This is really brutal. Okay, and I'm going to make myself really small up here to let you see this chart look at this now u.s existing home sales have dropped for 11 consecutive months and if you see the far right here of this chart this is a drop off year over year of 34 percent in existing home sales now some people may think that there's not anything brutally happening in the housing market because prices are not crashing well prices are coming down fairly quickly for the real estate market but what's really crashing is sales. And again, you have to talk about the broader effect on the economy, all the people tied in to uh, the real estate industry, even retailers that are heavy uh, into selling furniture like Ikea uh, see a huge drop off in business when real estate sales, sales volumes uh, plunge like they are right now. And actually, if you look all the way to the bottom here, this is worse than the plunge that we had during the previous housing bubble, 2007, 8, 2009. And I think most of you on here know by now that this comes amid the uh, fastest rise in mortgage rates and interest rates in this short amount of time that we've ever seen. And the focus on this channel now is going to be more leaning towards how can we do this to benefit ourselves, right? We can't save the world. Uh, a lot of people out there aren't really paying attention. Uh, they don't have their head in the game. They're not ahead of the curve. And instead of waiting uh, a lot of these people that are not paying attention they're buying real estate at the peak of the bubble they're buying automobiles at the peak of a bubble uh, they're buying uh, stocks at the peak of the stock market because i think that's going to go down as well but for those of us paying attention this gives us tremendous opportunity and i think we're going to be probably a very small percentage of the population uh, a lot of us here hopefully anyways that are going to benefit from uh, the times that we're going into here over the next few years i think it's going to be a major bear market a major economic downturn. Some people say just a recession, anywhere from a mild recession to a bad recession, all the way into a great depression and Mad Max, a type of collapse. I hope it's not that bad, 
but we all have to get ourselves out, you know, mentally prepared for something that is going to be that bad. And it's not just going to be job losses. It's going to be outrageous cost of living, uh, especially food inflation, more food shortages. And speaking of food shortages, a big thing that's been in the news lately is the cost of eggs. And it's not bad in some states. I, some of you let me know down in the comments that eggs are still three fifty, four dollars a dozen. Uh, but states like California, we're seeing much, much higher egg prices here. And excuse me, really quick, I got to take a drink here. Yeah, by the way, I won this award a few Father's Days ago. The best dad ever, right? Out of all the dads in the world, I'm the best. Wow, it's pretty. Uh, it's a pretty big honor, right? All right, we're going to look at a few more charts here in just a minute, but what can we do? What else can we do to prepare for what we're going into? If you could save cash, save cash, because there's going to be buying opportunities down the road. We just talked about real estate. Declining sales leads to declining prices. So many people right now are priced out of the real estate market, especially when you look at the monthly payment with these higher mortgage rates. And even people that have money to buy a home right now, well, the smart ones, a lot of them are waiting to see what happens because they know we're headed into a major bear market in real estate. So if you have cash, you're going to be uh, one of the few that benefits the most in this economic environment that we're going into. How can we save cash when everything's so expensive? Uh, that's the question that I get a lot, and that's the uh, million-dollar question, right? And that's not an easy answer, but we have to cut back where we can. Um, what I'm doing personally, I'm trying to cut back here and there, everything from my cell phone bill to uh, cutting back on things that I buy. Instead of taking uh, far away big vacations, we're taking little vacations, little day trips around you know, California here. Uh, we're driving our old cars for longer instead of buying new cars, which we would both love to have a new car right now. Um, we're keeping our old cars on the road for longer. One's got 90 something thousand miles. One's got over 140,000 miles. Uh, so just examples of what I'm doing, and I'd like to hear what you're doing uh, down below in comments. I love reading your comments and let me know how you're saving money, how you're stacking. Are you stacking cash? And what are you doing to allow yourself to stack more cash? Where are you cutting back? And where are you um, you know, saving money at? Where are you trimming your costs? Now, many people say, JJ, I have a family. I can't trim costs. Uh, kids are expensive. Uh, food's expensive. I have to feed them. Absolutely. So maybe do what businesses do. What do they do? They do cost cutting and businesses lay people off. And of course, layoffs are a big thing in the news now. Look at all the huge layoffs. So what can you do if you have an expensive family? Sell a few of your kids. <laughs> Get rid of them. Okay, I have to joke around a little bit today. Uh, people, it's Saturday. Give me a break, all right? And if I can make just one person laugh out of all the people watching this, that's worth it. But let's get into some other charts here right now. And uh, this next one's really going to be an eye-opener here uh, on what's happening with the economy, the U.S. consumer, uh, credit card debt. I'll take a look at this. And I've, again, moved myself up to the upper corner here. Hello, everybody. And it reminds me of, uh, of, of school. JJ, go stand in the corner. Do they still do that in school nowadays with, with kids? Do they ask them to stand in the corner? <laughs> well, they did when I was a kid. Take a look at this chart, folks. Uh, we all know here, if you've been on this channel, you know the U.S. savings rate is now plunged and it's below uh, the financial crisis level 2007, 2008, 2009. And it's actually the lowest that it's been in decades. Consumers are tapped out. Uh, people have very little money left over at the end of the month because of the, the cost of living, the stagnant wages. But look at this here, uh, these lines here and the difference, right? So we're looking at credit card debt, the red line. We see that's exploding here. Of course, we all know it's exploding because I talk about that quite frequently. We all know that the savings rate is plunging. But look at the difference here. Look at the divergence now here in 2022 or early 2023. This chart only goes back to late 2022, but you get the picture. And when we get the next update, it's likely going to be worse than this because credit card debt is still rising and, and savings is still plunging. Now look at this compared to just a few years ago. Remember 2018, 2019 when they started to raise interest rates. And then what happened in 2020? Well, savings surged with all the rescue programs, all the payouts, all the prevention programs, stimulus checks, enhanced unemployment benefits. Combined with you don't have to pay your mortgage, you don't have to pay your rent, you don't have to pay your loans back. Right, All the insanity that came out in early 2020, so we saw the green, the savings rate skyrocket, and we saw debt plunge. People didn't have places to go because they were scared, in many cases, to go out and spend money. 
In other cases, they couldn't go even if they wanted to because everything was shut down. Uh, but yeah, look to the far right here and, uh, and let me know if this ends well with the skyrocketing debt and plunging savings. All right, now still on the topic of credit card debt, take a look at this. We talked a few reports ago about how Discover Card came out. And they said that there's a lot more defaults and charge-offs in the works. Charge-offs meaning people can't pay their credit card bills. And Discover Card is reporting this directly. In fact, the report that we talked about previously, it had doubled from last year. And I didn't show a chart in that previous report. So here it is. Discover Card making this announcement. The loss provisions now close to 4% of their cardholders or more accurately, the charge-off rate based on their portfolio of credit card accounts. And if you look at the 2022 actual, it was about 1.8%, so less than 2%. If you look at their 2023 forecast based on the number of people that are falling behind currently, well, we can see there that it's way more than doubling. So folks, what are we doing to prepare for this? Again, like to read your comments down below here. You know what I'm doing. I'm not going crazy on the spending. I'm being very uh, cautious on overspending and trying to separate the needs from the wants, right? When you want to buy something, stop and ask yourself, do you need to buy it? Okay, you want to buy it, but do you need to buy it? So right now we've decided we don't need to buy a newer vehicle. We'd like to, we want to, right? But it's not a need. And I think uh, with the cost of living that we're going to see here skyrocketing with higher cost of energy and, and food prices being at the, amongst the top of the list here that, uh, you know, I think we need to be very, very careful going into these times. And if you're not someone that needs to be careful, bless you, because uh, maybe you are doing very, very well and you have no worries at all. You've got a million dollars put away in the bank. And, uh, you know, you may be one of the people giving thumbs down to this video because this doesn't apply to you. But I think most people uh, maybe would want to think about being cautious here. Uh, being ahead of the curve, uh, critical thinking, uh, see what's headed on uh, towards us on the horizon or down the river here. And could be a rough ride for some people, but uh, I think it's going to be smoother if we pay attention and stay on top of news like this. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Big love to everybody. Keep stacking. Hope you're doing well. Talk to you very soon. Bye, everybody.